This is Liber Patris Sapientiae. Thou that in this book beginneth to read, keep well this counsel, the better shalt thou speed. Be thou in a place secret by thyself alone, so that no man see or hear what thou shalt say or do. Yet, ere thou begin to read much, take thou good heed, with whom thou keepest company, I counsel thee indeed. Trust not thy friend too much, wheresoe'er thou go, for he that thou trustest best sometime may be thy foe. And take heed to the words of the Father of Wisdom, how he teacheth his son how he should do to keep his precepts of bodily governance, and with his cunning he will thee greatly advance. And if thou wilt not to his words take heed, thou shalt stand here oft in great fear and dread. For he that hath a forewit, he needs not do amiss. And he that doth folly, the folly shall be his. Now, my dear son, be thou not a no, to learned nor to lewd, to high nor to low, neither to young nor old, rich nor poor. Unto them thou teach nothing, my lore. Also, to such men that hold themselves wise, and so forth, to the fools that glide on the ice, they ween in great books should be the art of the science of alchemy, but they be not worth a fart. Therefore, my son, to thee this science I may well teach, and if thou wilt upon thy enemy be reach, or to purchase or build any good thing, it shall be to thy great furthering. This worthy science of alchemy, if thou wilt it leer, a little money out of thy purse thou must forbear, to buy therewith flos florum it is most worthiest, and to build well her cabin and her nest. And if thou put out money for any other thing, it is to thy loss, and to thy great hindering, except it be for thy work's natural food, which is had out of stone, air, and wood. And if thou have all things within the growing, then thou needest not to buy any manner of thing that should be to this science belonging, but beware of thyself for fear of hanging. For then thou and the science were forever lost, if thou make thereof any manner of lost, to any man or woman, old or young, Beware of thyself for fear of discovering. For if thou make any man privy of thy counsel, rich or needy, thou must so beware, sleeping or waking, for once imagining of money making. For if God sends thee grace and understanding, with this science thou mayst have good living, but beware of speech of women liberal, and of the voice and sight of children general. Son in thine own house, thou mayst well get a good morsel of meat, thy mouth to sweet, both pheasant, partridge, plover and liveret, though thou cry it not out in the common market. Therefore keep close of thy tongue and of thy hand, from the officers and governors of the land, and from other men, that they of thy craft nothing know. For in witness thereof, they will thee hang and draw. And thereof the people will thee at seasons indict, and great treason against thee they will write, without that the king's grace be to thee more. Thou shalt forever in this world be forlore. Also without thou be sure of another thing, to purchase the license of thy king, for all manner of doubts thee shall be tied, the better thou mayest work, and both go and ride. 
Also another thing I shall thee leer. The poor people take thou nothing dear, but ever serve thy God all way at the beginning. And among the poor people, the better shall be thy living. Now my child, to my precepts look thou take heed, whatsoever fall after, the better shalt thou speed. Better it is to have a thing, than for it to wish. For when thou feelest a sore, tis hard for thee to get a leech. Now my dear son, to thee I will declare more of this work, which shall be thy welfare, if thou canst consider all my sayings. For therewith thou mayest find a full precious thing. And son, though this writing be made in rhyme, yet take thou thereat no great disdain, till thou hast proved my words, in deed and in thought. I wit it well, it shall be set at naught. Therefore, of all bodies and spirits more or less, Mercury is called Flos Florum and worthiest princess. For her birth and marvelous dealing, she is most worthiest to have been king. For she is earth and water most heaviest, and she will conjoin with fire and air most lightest, and so forth. With her love she will run and flee, for she delighteth no other game or glee. Some say that of sulfur and mercury all bodies mineral are mad, engendered in the earth with diverse colors clad by the virtue of decotion before preparation to the likeness of every body mineral in their fashion. I will first begin with Saturn after other men's sayings, how he is engendered in the earth with unclean mercury flying. And of mercury he is most heaviest with black sulfury earth mixed, save he is soft of fusion and his sulfur nothing fixed. Jupiter is a white body made of pure mercury outward and of clear sulfur somewhat earthly and white inward. He is in kind softest and well in his fixation, for he is almost fixed, but he lacketh decotion. Mars is a white body most of unclean mercury in the earth he made. And he is hardest of fusion with sulfur earthly clayed. To blackness and redness he will soonest consume by heat or by corrosive when the spirit beginneth to fume. Soul is the purest, somewhat red, and is made of clean mercury and sulfur fixed, engendered with clear red sulfur in the earth well mixed, and therefore he is without default and lacketh no degree, for he is almost hardest of fusion, and heaviest in ponderosity. Venus is a body more red of pure mercury made in his substance, most of red sulfur and green, and therein is great variance. And the earth engendered with corrosive and bitter substance, well fixed and hard of fusion, rude in governance. Mercury is a body, if he be with a substance moved, mixing one kind with his kind, so shall he be loathed. One spirit received with another, the which of them be main is cause of ingeneration of every body metalline. Luna is a pure white body of clean mercury and sulfur white engendered, and she is a little hard of fusion and almost well fixed. And she is next cleanest in tincture of whiteness, of pondrosity light, of Jupiter bearing his whiteness. And so after the color of that earth is sulfury and receptual, some men do say is engendered every metal. But my son, the 
perfect work of this alteration I shall inform the true way of another fashion. Now have I declared the working of the body's mineral, whereof they be engendered after other men's sayings over all. And as in the place of the earth one body was fully wrought, so must the artificial medicine be, or else it is not. Now will I declare the worthiest of Mercury in special, how she is the noblest spirit that is mineral, most marvelous in working and in degree. She is called the matter principalist of the three. Also, she is very subtle in many things artificial. She will both give and take tincture most special to him or of him that she lovest most best, in special when she is warmed in her nest. My son, Mercury is called the mightiest floss florum, and most royal and richest of all singulorum. She is very patron and princess most royal, and she is very mother of every metal. She is vegetable, animal, and mineral. She is four in kind, and one in general. She is earth, air, water, and fire. Among all others she hath no peer. She killeth, and slayeth, and also doth calcine. She dieth, and also doth she live again. She giveth life, and also ingression, for jointly she is three in one. She is a very friendly mixer, the progeneration of a great elixir. She is both body, soul, and spirit in color very red, black, and wet. Many be the wooers that hang on her tail, but she will not with them ideal. They would her wed against her will with foemen that liken her full ill. She will deal with no manner of wight, but with her husband, as it is great right. With him she will bear much fruit, for he is by nature her self-same suit. My son, of him fools have much despite, and therein such fools lose their light. For sometimes he is dark, and sometimes bright, for he is like no other wight. For if they have their kind engendering, their natural food and good keeping, they shall increase fruit by Dean, very red and white, king and queen. My son, in this science I do deny all things that be discording truly, all manner of salts I do defy, and all manner of sulfurs in waters of Croce, also alume vitriol, our pigmentum, and hair, gold, silver, alkali, and sandivar, honey, wax, and oils, or calx else, gums, galls, and also eggshells. Also I defy antimony, beryl, and crystal, rosin, pitch, also amber, jet, and coral, herbs, dated stones, marble, or tingless. If there come any of all these, it is the worse. Also barrels, goat's horns, and alum plum. Good with them will none be done. All things that discordeth from metal, it is contrary to this work in general. My son, many fools to me have sought, but they and I accord right not. I leave them there as I them find, and as fools I make them blind. For which Mercury they have erred full sore, and then when they had, they could do no more. Therefore in philosophy she beareth the flower, for she is king, prince, and emperor. 
yet. My dear son, be thou not a gnome, too learned nor to lewd, too high nor to low, that this work standeth by Mercury, and in her fire her own special love, both life and dare. For he is her son, she is his fright, in whom she worketh all her might. He is her son, she is his mother, she loveth him paramour and no other. In soul and loon, in her meeting is all love, for of Mercury only is all her behove, and with them she worketh all her might, but they may never increase on fright. Therefore it is possible to cast a projection pure upon a million, to make a perfect body of tincture, with medicine of spirits well jointed and fixed, it shall not be perceived where it is well mixed. And therefore, if there comes silver or gold in at thy gate, the which men use in coin or in common plate, I swear by God that all this world hath wrought, all thy labor and work shall turn to naught. For with what metal soever that mercury be joined, because of her coldness and moistness, she is a cloyed. Put them never so close together, she will fume anon. And when they come into the fire, she will soon be gone. Therefore, Mercury hath a lover that passeth them a thousandfold, whoso will him can. And he is her lover and her lemon sweet. And so his counsel she will keep both in his chamber and also in his bed, also alive and when they be dead. Seek ye forth, fools, as ye have sought, for in all other things find ye right not. Now, my dear son, to thee I will indite, the truth in word and deed I will write, how that a precious stone shall be made, thee to rejoice and make thee full glad. As I said in the thirty-second chapter unto my conclusion, how I should inform the truth after another fashion, and to perform this science both in word and deed, in making of our medicine God must us speed, the which is called the great elixir, and is verily made with a strong mixer, the which is a stone very mineral, and thou mayest him well get ever all. My son, thou shalt take to Mercury no other thing, but earth that's heavy and hard and stiff standing, the which in himself is dark, bright, dry, and cold. To join them together thou mayest be full bold. One of them to ten parts of that water, running most heaviest. And they shall be one, and to thy work most mightiest. Then hast thou man and woman together brought, the which is done by great love in a thought. The which too be both spirits, and one body most heaviest, when they be in your chamber and bed joined in the element lightest, the which is more bigger and bigger, hot and dry, and therein they will both kiss together and neither weep nor cry. For when earth and water is well mixed, by the virtue of the lightest element, well hardened and fixed, for before that time, they be water running both, and then shall turn to fix body, be they never so loath. For in their bed they shall make a perpetual conjunction, after the feeding of the light element and of their proportion. So should they be decoached, having the perfect fixation in the likeness of a body infusion having is fashion. But at the first in their bed, 
they may endure no great hate. So as they may well labor in their bed for sweat. At the first, if there be in their chamber overmuch red color, hastily going thereto will cause great dolor. For in their first nest they should be both water running, and because of heat they should be ever drying, and so therein become a subtle dry substance the which work shall thee greatly advance. Therefore their nest must be made of a strong kind of the most hardest and clearest body that they not outwind. For if it so be that their chamber or nest begin to break, anon out thereof they will begin to crack. And then is all thy work and thy great labor lost then thou mayst begin again upon a new cost. And so thou mayst not be negligent and hasty, but of the bed be sure, without it be hard stuff, and clear it will not endure. And if thou will at the first hand give sudden heat, it will unto thy work be nothing meet. And if thou let him, have any sudden great cold, all this shall break thy work, then art thou too bold. Let their nest be somewhat large, with a broad roof, and therein they shall abide if it be strong and close above, and in proportion put thereto nothing more nor less. But as is said before, if thou do, it is the worse. Also from the bed's head there must rise a high spout, and another almost down to the bottom that the spirit go not out. For thou must save the flyers that swim into the upper place, for they may hereafter engender a body as well as the other in space. Also be sure that thou put in their bed no other thing, then thereof thou shalt have no great winning. If thou do this, it shall be to thee for the best to keep them close from flying and warm in their nest. First, with soft fire her nest must be warmed. With a little bigger fire, with overmuch they shall be harmed. Under thy chamber flower measure thy fire with time. Then cometh the reward gold and silver fine. After the quantity, space and time must be had, for to deal together they be in their dealing glad, and how long space and time I cannot well say, that they in their chamber and nest will be in sport and play. Behold the uppermost of their nest, what there cometh out the sweating of their bodies laboring round about, and when they have played and sweat and labored so sore, they will be still, and neither labor nor sweat any more. Then let them cool easily, and draw their breath, and then there shall be some above and some beneath. There thou shalt see a stone as it were gray powder, which shall be to thee a right great wonder. Then take them out of their chamber and bed and on, and lay them upon a marble stone, and break them thereon. And look what thou hast in of color and ponderosity. Put it to him as much of floss florum greatest indignity. That is the same spirit that thou hadst before, and so meddle them together, and leer them the same lore. All together in another bed, and in their chamber they must be, for a marvelous work thereof, thou shalt understand and see. And thus, so oft thou must multiply thy work, to ascend and descend into the air as doth the lark, 
For when the lark is weary above in his stound, anon he falleth right down to the ground. Behold well their body, and to their head lay thine ear, and hearken thou well what work they make there. If they begin to sing any manner of voice, give them more heat till thou hear no noise, and thus give them more heat in their chamber and bed also, till thou hearest no manner of noise rumbling to nor fro, and thus continue in their bed, in their sporting place, after the quantity thereof continue so many days. When their play and wrestling is all well done, in their voice, singing and crying and sweating up and down, give their chamber bigger heat till their nest be red, and so bring them down low, and have no fear nor dread. For thus with heat they shall be brought full low, that they shall in their bed nay cry nor crow, but as a body lie still down in their bed in their own likeness as they were bodies dead. Of gray and white is all his chief color, for then he is past all his great dolor. I swear by Almighty God that all hath wrought, thou hast found out that many other men hath sought. Then take thou him out of his chamber and bed, and thou shalt then find a fixed body as he were dead. Keep thou him close and secretly within thy place, and thank Almighty God of his grace. Now, my son, before this, after this science I have right well sought, and thus to thee I have the white elixir perfectly wrought, and if thou wilt of the red elixir perfectly understand, thou must take such another work in hand. My son, when thou hast wrought more upon more, doubling each time as I said before, make thou what thou wilt of red substance, as I did the white work in manner of governance. Then thou must take the red stone that is all ponder, and lay on a marble stone and break him asunder, and to meddle him with the white spirit and water clear, and so put him in his bed and chamber in the fire. And so in his chamber and in his bed he must all this while be, till thou hast turned and brought him to another manner of glee. This red elixir, if thou wilt open work here, this manner of school, thou must write well lear. Thou must hang him in his chamber with red color, till he be fixed and brought from his great dolor. Then of this worthy work be not thou aghast, for in the work all the worst is past. And so in his fiery nest and chamber let him be sure, for the longer he be in, the better shall be his tincture, so that he run not like blood overcoming his fusion. Then hast thou perfectly this work in conclusion. Thus he must continue in this great heat of firing, till he be full fixed, that he be not running nor flying. Then he will give tincture without number, running like wax, and to his like of fusion he will both join and mix. And if thy work be thus well guided and so forth led, then hast thou in thy work right well and wittily sped. For if thou do otherwise than I have thee told, in the adventure of thy work thou mayst be too bold. For if thou work by good measure and perfect time, thou shalt have very good gold and silver fine. Then shalt thou be richer in thyself than any king, without he labor the science and have the same thing. Now, my dear son, I shall teach thee how to cast a projection. Therein lieth all the great perfectness with the conclusion to lead an imperfect body to his great perfectness, enjoining that like to his like thou standest in no distress. 
For when thou hast joined the milk to the bodies dry, then hast thou the white and red elixir truly. The witch is a marvelous and very precious stone. For therein lieth in this science all the work upon. In this science these stones be in themselves so precious that in their working and nature they be marvelous. To show thee the great virtue furthermore I will declare that if thou canst with this manner of working well fare. First thou must take of that body which is next soul in perfection and of his color toward in ponderosity and proportion, being soluble as it were clear blood running. In the hot element it is always lightest and fleeting. Then take part of the red elixir that is the precious stone, and cast him upon that body that is blood running anon. And when thou hast thus perfectly this work wrought, it shall be turned into perfect soul with little labor or not. On the same wise do for Luna that is in the color so white, and joining with that body that is shining and somewhat light. In the same proportion cast him the very white stone, and then is all thy greatest work both made and done. Then hast thou both the red work and the white. Therefore blessed be that time both day and night. For this work that standeth by great virtue and love, thou must thank Almighty God in heaven above. Son, in the twenty-first chapter there write I a full true rhyme. That is to say, unto this work thou have no great disdain till thou have proved my words and deed and thought. I know it well, this science shall be set at naught. My son, to these last precepts, look thou take good heed, for better tis to have, than to wish for in time of need. For whoso is bold in time to a friend to break, he that is thy friend may be thy foe, and his enmity rake. And therefore, my son, I shall give thee a great charge. In uttering of speech, be thou not too large to tell every man what thou hast in silver or gold. For to have it from thee, many men will be right bold. Also use not to reveal or write that should exceed to thy bodily health the better shalt thou speed. Use temperate diet and temperate travel. For when physician thee faileth, this shall thee avail. And leave all blind works that thou hast seen or heard of conclusions or proved by sublimations, preparations, distillations, or dissolutions. Of such manner of things great books do greatly specify, and all those contrary sayings in this craft I do plainly deny. Also, my son, remember how thou art mortal, abiding but a while in this world which is terrestrial. Thou wouldest not how long, nor hence how soon, that death shall thee visit, and unto thee come. And remember thee well at thy departing, whom thou lovest and trustest best, old and young. Make him thine heir and most of thy counsel, and give him thy cunning or thy book every day. But beware of flattering and glossing people, of boasters and crackers, for they will thee beguile. Of thy precious cunning behind or before, and when they have their intent, they will give thee a scorn. Therefore make no man of thy counsel rude nor rusty, but him that thou knowest both true and trusty, 
in riding and going, sleeping and waking, both in word and deed, and in his disposing. Also in thy own chamber look thou be secret, that thy doors and windows be closed shut. For some will come and look in every corner, and anon they will ask what thou makest there. And therefore a good excuse must soon be had, or else thou shalt verily whine for to run mad. Say thou laborest sore, both sleeping and waking, to the perfect way of strange colors making. As it be sure, bice, vermilion, orum, musicum, and others more, or else with some people thou shalt never have a dung. Also thereof thou must have many samples to show, or else they that harms think will say so. Also furthermore I give thee right good warning. Beware of thy working, and also of thy uttering, for the examination of the people better or worse, ere thou have for thy work thy money in thy purse. Therefore take heed, my son, unto these chapters six score, and all manner of things said what should be done before. For in astronomy thou must have right good feeling, or else in this book thou shalt have simple believing. For thou must know well of seven principal characters, to what bodies in heaven moving that they be likened in those figures, and to understand their properties and their conditions, in colors, qualities, softness, hardness, and in their proper fashions. Now, son, to thee that understandest perfection and sciences, whether it be speculative or practic to my sentences, in this science and labor I think it great ruth, therefore I write to thee very truth. And to thee that understandest no perfection nor practic, in no conclusion proved, that should be to his work like, by Almighty God that all this world hath wrought, I have said and performed to thee right not. Therefore, my son, before that thou this book begin, understand wisely in this what is written therein. For if thou canst not find by this book neither soul nor moan, then go forth and seek thou further as other fools have done. Explicit liber dictus, Peter Sapientiae.